What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. So today we are talking about the fall 2022 collection from Essie and I am just very excited. Fall nail polishes are my absolute favorite and I always just love seeing what brands decide to do for curating their fall collections. So this time we've got six brand new colors. They're all very classic fall cream shades. If you haven't heard of Essie before, they are a mainstream salon nail polish brand that is eight free, meaning they're free of eight of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are also vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients and they are cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So there was actually a long period of time where I was not reviewing or using Essie because when I first got into nail polish, I did not like the formula at all. I felt like it was really just not beater friendly. It wasn't self leveling and I hated the round skinny brush that they used to have. But in the last couple of years, I've been trying them again and I really find myself enjoying them. They did switch to a wide flat brush that has a rounded tip, so application is way easier. And I think their formula in general has improved a lot. I think it's a lot more workable and usable and it's also way more beginner friendly and it does self level now. So I was excited to see these, but I do have some thoughts on the collection. But let me show you the swatches first, then we'll talk about my thoughts, pricing, availability, all that good stuff. So roll the footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base. So first up in the collection, we have this shade Transcend the Trend, which I would consider this to be a light teal. It definitely has a little hint of that turquoisey color, but I would say it's a little bit more muted than that. The opacity was really nice here. It was pretty nice in the first coat, but of course it didn't cover everything up. So I did need a second coat for full coverage, but I have a feeling that this shade is gonna be good for nail art just because it really did cover up that visible nail line. It didn't look sheer. There was just some parts that needed a little bit more polish. So here it is in two coats, really beautiful shade. I feel like this is an any time of year color. Next up we have the shade Force of Nature and this is the color that I was the most excited about when I saw the collection. It's a really beautiful deep forest green. It has a very strong yellowy undertone and the color itself is really rich. It's a nice dark color but it's not so dark that it looks black in lower lightings. You can still see that distinct green color but but it is just a really beautiful, mysterious kind of shade. You guys know I love green nail polishes, but I especially love these deep foresty kind of colors. Moving on, we have a couple of nude shades. This first one is called Off the Grid, and this one I would describe as a camel color. Again, we're working with a really impressive opacity here. It wasn't quite there in the first coat, but it did actually cover up my visible nail line, which I thought was really impressive. And then that second coat just gave me that full coverage. One thing I did notice about this shade is that it does dry down slightly darker than it applies on the nails. It's not not too big of a difference, but just something to keep in mind when you are checking out this color. And the second nude shade is this one, Hike It Up, and this one is a lighter beige cream. And again, really nice opacity. You can see it fully covers up my visible nail line in that first coat. But of course I am doing a second just because it was still a little bit patchy in the first coat, but really impressive. Again, I feel like all of these shades would be really nice for nail art. I just think the coverage is really good and you wouldn't have to go over your nail art a few times, which is something that I've had to do when I'm working with more sheer polishes but just a really pretty color. It has that sort of olive-y undertone to it. So I think this is a very perfect autumn nude. Next up we have Risk Takers Only, and this one is a really vibrant orange cream. And this one was actually pretty much a one coater on me. I would probably just wear this in the one coat because it did cover everything up, but I am showing you a second coat just so you can see what that looks like as well. And honestly, this color to me is so vibrant vibrant and bright. It feels a little bit more like a summer shade, but it could be a good transitional color into fall. There's a little bit of that reddish tone to it, so I think it does kind of work for that as well. And last but definitely not least, we have the shade Bold and Bolder, and this one is a really deep maroon cream shade. I was really excited when I saw this formula because I feel like these deep red colors tend to have a more jelly-like formula, which I don't mind, but I'm always looking 
going for a deep red cream finish just because I feel like that's a little bit easier to work with. And this one did not fail me. It's really beautiful. It gave me perfect coverage in two coats and it's got that nice creamy finish. So it feels very opaque and the color itself is absolutely stunning. It's super deep. So this is one of those shades that might look a little bit black in low lighting, but you can still see that beautiful maroon color coming through. So here are all of the shades together and overall I enjoyed them. I liked the formulas. I think the orange and the blue are a little bit more summery leaning for me. So they're probably shades that I would wear more as transitional colors. And then the rest of the shades definitely feel very autumnal. I think they're super gorgeous. I love those deep mysterious tones. So those are the polishes and overall I think they're really good shades. I think they're good classic creams to have in your collection. But honestly I have the same thoughts as I did in my last SE review which is that I just want to see more from them. I know that not everybody likes specialty finishes but I just keep on thinking. I don't remember if it was last year or the year before that but they came out with this amazing Halloween collection that had all of these really intense shimmers and I think that that was the best collection I have ever seen from Essie and I really am hoping to see more polishes like that but that being said I know that the cream finish is the most popular finish and I do think that these are really nice colors and I think especially if you're just building up your collection these are really great staples to have. I'm just thinking about that incredible Halloween collection and wishing that we can get some really funky shades, you know? So yeah, like I said, these polishes have a wide flat brush now with a rounded tip. They come in 13.5 milliliter bottles and they retail in a lot of different places. I saw on Ulta, they are $10 USD per bottle. So I'm going to link that down below and I'll also link other options down below if I can find something less expensive. But yeah, that is it for my thoughts on the collection. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you like the all cream finishes from Essie? Are you a fan of them or would you like to see some shimmers like me? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a vlog channel where I am trying to post weekly. It doesn't happen every single week, but I am posting on there more often. And I do have a podcast, so I'm going to link that in the description if anybody's interested in hearing me chat for a really long time. And of course, a huge shout out to my Cosmic Admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocket Man's daughter, and Paula. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Delane and Delane wants to know what type of fun engaging activities are you looking forward to in Vegas? So if you didn't know, I am currently in the process of moving cross country. Actually, by the time this video comes out, I will have already moved into my new place, which is kind of crazy to think about because present me literally cannot fathom, but hopefully future me is having a good time. <laughs> But anyway, one of the interesting things about Las Vegas in general is that it's very much like a party city. When people go there on trips, they tend to do a lot of like the drinking, gambling, clubbing kind of thing. And I do literally none of those activities, but I think that's actually one of the main reasons why I would be a good fit to live there because I wouldn't, you know, fall into bad habits. But I think the thing I'm the most excited for is just having outdoor space and being able to to go in a pool. I don't have a pool and in my new place there is a community pool. Really excited to just be able to go swimming. I think that's like one of the big things for me. Being able to go outside when I want to even though it's going to be incredibly hot when I move there. So those are two very simple things that I'm excited for but I think I'm also just excited for like the weird touristy things that there are to do out there. I feel like it's probably a lot to mention in this video but maybe I'll vlog about it in the future but there's just like a lot of really random attractions that you can check out and there's also just a lot of places that you can go from there and visit other spots that have interesting stuff going on. I feel like I sound so vague right now but it's because I, I have lists in my mind but if I start listing them then I feel like I'm probably just gonna go on forever. So yeah maybe that'll be something that I vlog in the future but overall just very excited for the journey and the new adventure. So that is it and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.